What is up guys, it's me your girl Barbara and today I am going to be giving you guys all the tips and tricks and useful information on how I got my 7 distinctions at the end of my high school finals. Now before we begin, I'm not here to brag, I don't need to be showing off to anybody. I just want to share these tips because I am always talking to family, friends, I'm always talking to people younger than me, telling them everything I did and I feel like I'm preaching the same story and there's so many people who need this information that don't have it so I figured I'd put it in a video for you guys. So get yourself a pen and a paper because I'm sure there's something useful that you could get from this video and let's just get into it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is work around your finals timetable. There is nothing else that is going to help you as much as that. Because when you're setting out your timetable, we all know how the drill goes. Me, the queen of timetables. You start off optimistic with a beautiful timetable, color-coded and everything. Then you start working and you realize things are taking a little bit longer than you think. Two minutes later, you're moving things over to the next day until you decide to completely scrap your timetable and instead just swing it. And now you find yourself studying at 5 a.m for the exam instead of packing things as tightly as i can i would give myself a few extra hours of leeway in which i could potentially be catching up things that i may have fallen behind on studying having four or five extra hours in my timetable for physics left blank not assigned to any specific topics to make sure that in case i fall behind i'm not going to be toppling over into the next day's work or into another subject study time the next thing to keep in mind when you're setting your timetable is to know your optimum study time I know that between 2 and 4 p.m. I am your weakest link. I just fall asleep. If I'm trying to study at that time, I fall asleep. It actually makes me lose morale for my next study session if I know that I wasn't productive in my current study session. So I just accepted that between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. <laughs> and instead use that to encourage me to work hard in the times when I could focus. The next thing you need to do is find yourself a study space and make that space sacred. When I was in high school, I used to use our boardroom, which I'm pretty sure we weren't allowed to do, but like a lot of people were doing it and a lot of people were getting their tutoring sessions from there. So half past seven in the morning, I would get to school, get into a boarding room and close the door. And because it was exam time, nobody was having any meetings. I'm not saying go to your high school's boardroom. I'm just saying that was the sacred space that I found and so you need to find a place where you're not going to be encountering any distractions and you need to go there every day. Your mind will start to accept that this is a place of focus, this is a place of studying and I would be able to channel my inner focus beam and stream all the way ahead into success. The next thing I want to say, which might be a very unpopular opinion, is that sometimes you need to put a few aspects of your life on hold if you want to achieve something, especially if it's something that you may never have achieved before. And one of the sacrifices I gave up was putting my sports on hold, which really, it was not fun. It was not a great time knowing that other people are training, other people are getting fit, and I'm indoor studying. But knowing the potential reward that was in store for me, made it all worth it and helped me keep going and as i always say preparation is key so the night before you need to sharpen your pencil make sure you have all your stationery together put your uniform out hang it on your door hang it on your chair on the table on the edge of your bed doing all these tiny things even if it means putting the cup and the saucer on the surface in the kitchen actually create a sense of excitement for the next day because you're telling your brain that there is something that you're anticipating and you're putting the whole process of going into your exams in a positive light which is what you need to do for a lot of people this is a time of anxiety and you just need to do as much as you can to convince yourself that this is actually going to be a positive experience and something that you can conquer so go for it make sure you prepare when it comes to study methods the main one actually the only one i use for theory is active recall and basically you read through the information recite it to yourself without looking and then write down as much as you can remember and then I mark it and then I repeat this process over and over again and then I come back after a couple of days and do it again which means you can't start studying for the test the day before otherwise this method doesn't work but spaced repetition and active recall if you've never heard of those methods do some research on them there's so many youtube videos about them but I think that's the most effective method you can use so these are my study notes as you can see I have my active recall notes where I write down everything as quickly as I can and then mark it 
Then I have my neat notes which I use to make summaries for future reference and finally I have my key cards which I use for definitions and short easy concepts. When it comes to practical papers like maths, physics, chemistry, those ones you literally just need to do practice papers and do past final exam papers so that you familiarize yourself with the layout because when I was studying for my physics exam I think I did between 10 and 14 past papers time yourself because you want to simulate that exam environment so that when you're writing your exam you're not under any unnecessary pressure you want to basically avoid as many surprises as you can so that you can put your full focus on regurgitating the knowledge that you have been studying and i know it's time consuming but trust me it's the best way to go my physics paper was three hours long and by the time i was going into the paper i was able to finish it in two hours and it's because i had seen the questions over and over again the style and the pattern of assessment usually doesn't change much i can't promise you and say that it's not going to change but usually if the past five years they've been asking the question in the same way then they're probably going to ask it like that again so make sure you understand the concept but also practice answering the questions the way that they need to be answered for you to get as many marks as you can because i mean that's why we are forget about finding out the inspiration behind newton seeing the apple how it fell from the tree no what you want to know is which equation to use for which calculation and finding that out as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible so that you can get as many marks as possible. So the next thing you need to make sure you do is get help. If you're struggling with a the concept, there's no point in trying to lie to yourself now. Get yourself a tutor. If you can't afford a tutor, if you can't find a good tutor, get yourself a study group but make sure it's not more than like two people otherwise you are going to get distracted a study group or a tutor will at least increase your accountability if not anything because you have to prepare for every single meetup before it happens and that means you're gonna have to cover your work more frequently and the times when you wouldn't necessarily have been studying for that subject you now have to study for it to prepare for your tutoring or your group study session one thing that I forgot to mention that is so important and I did so frequently was talking to my teachers and booking extra study sessions to ask questions, ask them to review your essay writing skills by doing mock essays also really really helps when you're preparing for your final. Okay, the next thing that I did was pray. I used to pray before you study, after you study, before you sleep, when you wake up, before the exam, after the exam. Spirituality will pull through. Whatever your faith is, whatever you believe in, if you don't believe in anything, you still need to find a place of peace and resonance and faith and reestablish the faith that you have in yourself and your capabilities. And another thing that brought me a lot of solace was just the fact that there are too many people praying for me. There are so many people who believed in me and my abilities for this not to go well. You know what I mean? Like you really have to keep that positive attitude and like people throw the word positivity around so much but you actually need a lot of optimism to keep going and believe in yourself because if you want to be a winner you have to believe you're the best especially world champions they say they're the best all the time without feeling bad without feeling shy without feeling anything if they can do it you can do it too also I have a lot of medals right now we're, we're the best at what we do The next thing I made sure I did, and this is I think my most important point, is to make sure you do something you love every day. And this goes beyond scrolling through social media and, I don't know, watching YouTube videos. Except for this one, obviously. <laughs> so whenever I came home, I would set at least 15 minutes aside just to dance to my favorite music in my room like nobody's watching because nobody was watching. If anybody was watching, that's embarrassing. But who cares, right? Just to really boost my energy and remind myself that there are good things in life. I highly recommend 15 minutes of a jam session, whether you can dance or you can't dance. Technically, you only can't dance in comparison to other people. The next thing you need to do is believe in yourself and do whatever it takes to convince yourself that you can do it. Because if you don't believe in yourself, forget about it. And when I say do whatever it takes, if it means waking up in the morning and talking to yourself in the mirror, downloading 500 inspirational quotes on your phone and sticking them up every step of the way on your way out of the house or out of your room, 
that's what you need to do you have to convince yourself that you can do it get enough sleep please make sure you get enough sleep eight hours of sleep you've been doing your homework you've been going to class you've been studying this information your whole high school career it's not just gonna disappear at the end of the day if you want to ace exams the goal is to get yourself in your optimum state of preparedness for the paper so that that one moment goes as perfectly as possible and the best way to do that is to make sure that you're well rested first of all do not burn yourself out by trying to do some extra climbing in the morning unless it's absolutely necessary because it'd be like that sometimes it happens but for the most part really try not to be doing heavy intensive equations the morning before your exam tiring your brain out even though you don't sweat after an exam the way you'd sweat after running a marathon it is still quite energy intensive and so you need to make sure that you're not spending all your energy before the exam before you write likewise stay away from people who are trying to revise the morning of the exam those people are not gonna help you and you can feel it so don't feel peer pressure to suddenly sit next to so and so because you've been working hard you watch this video now you're gonna go execute these things in the paper while you're writing be present don't get sucked into the whole process don't just go through the motions sometimes when i was writing i'd literally just stop take a breath realize that i'm sitting here in this paper i'm the one in control and then go back be as present as you can don't just get in there and get washed away by the paper and get out and let the paper happen to you you happen to the paper you control what you are putting down and practice this while you're doing your practice tests at home Once you've written the exam, it's over. Say thank you for the opportunity, let it go. Focus on the next one. You're one day closer to matric vac. Like I said, exams are energy intensive, so give yourself a chance to de-stress. Give yourself a chance to relax, recollect yourself before you go into studying or you take the day off. Why are you still here stressing? It is at the end of the day still important to acknowledge that this is a big event happening in our lives. If you're sitting on the mark, you haven't really received your acceptance letter, your final exams actually do go a long way so accept that this is important and let that importance not give you anxiety but instead guide and direct your sense of dedication first of all you have written so many assessments in your life so many exams in your life and you are going to write more exams after this one so please don't let the appearance of a new exam shock you second of all your exam paper was set by a human being next as much as there's things in this paper that you don't know there are also going to be things in the paper that you do know and our objective today is to make sure that the things you do know are more than the things you don't know so that you can succeed and that is really all i have to say to you guys in this video i really really do hope you found something useful from it share it with whoever you think needs to watch this video exactly what i'm telling you guys is exactly what i did there's no magic formula the magic formula is in here in your heart and i am going to be doing a short little series on my igtv on study motivation and study prep so you can head over there if you want to catch that thank you guys so so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it i will see you guys all on my next video